Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about parts. Now, you might be wondering, what is this lesson about? What is Bob going to be teaching us this morning? What are parts? Well, if you have a car or a lawnmower or a bicycle or a sewing machine, if you have any kind of machine, it's made out of parts and that's the term we use. When we talk about screws and bolts and springs and gears and sprockets, we're talking about all of the parts that you will find in any kind of machine. On the farm here, I have tractors. We have vans that we drive. Uh we have um air conditioners that keep our flowers cool. We have a lot of different things and they all have parts in them. So, this is a bit of a technical lesson but I think this is worthwhile for everyone who is learning English. This isn't just a lesson for those who are mechanics or engineers but it will also help you a lot if that is your career. So, once again, parts are all of the little pieces that we have inside of machines uh and welcome to this English lesson about parts. A socket. So, a socket is any kind of hole that something goes into. So, if you look on the front of your car, you have headlights and there is a light bulb in there. That light bulb goes into a socket. So, a socket is usually used to describe something electrical although it doesn't have to be. This is a very common use of it and that is probably the best example. A light bulb goes into a socket. On my van, the turn signal stopped working and I put a new bulb in the socket but that didn't fix it because the socket actually needed to be replaced. So, a socket is anything where something goes into it. A belt. So, often there are moving parts in a vehicle or on another piece of equipment or in a machine and sometimes you have um to get the the power from one section to another section and there are many ways to do this. One way is for you to have belts. In a car, if you open the hood, I think it's called the is it called the boot? I'm not sure what it's called in British English. This is a very North American English lesson by the way. A belt is used to connect two pulleys. So, the pulley is the round part. The belt is the black part that connects the two. When the one pulley turns, the power that is making that pulley turn goes through the belt to the other pulley. So, the belt is the part that connects the two pulleys. If you are curious to see uh belts and pulleys, just open the hood of your vehicle if you have one today and you will see at least one or two belts and many, many pulleys. And then, of course, you have what's called a chain and chains are often connected to sprockets. Now, don't get confused. This is a socket. This is a sprocket. They sound the same but they are very different. Similar to how two pulleys can be connected with a belt, two sprockets can be connected with a chain. The most common sprocket and chain system would be on a bicycle. If you have a bicycle, you can go and look and you will see a sprocket at the front. There might be two or three and then there might be one, two or five or six sprockets at the back and connecting them will be a chain. So, we would call it a bike chain but there are chains used in uh, all kinds of different pieces of equipment but probably the most common would be on a bicycle. And a gear. So, the difference between a sprocket and a gear. A sprocket will never connect to another sprocket. A sprocket is always designed to have a chain. I really like saying the word sprocket. That's a fun word to say. A gear, however, connects to another gear. If you were to take apart the transmission in your vehicle, don't do that. Only a mechanic should do that. You would find inside lots of gears. They're usually made of steel. When one gear turns, it turns another gear. And then you have different gear ratios. So, when a small gear connects to a bigger gear, it might be a ratio of when this gear turns once, the small gear turns twice. A little too technical. I wasn't gonna get that technical in this lesson but I'm having fun. So, I might explain more things than I had originally planned. 
pulleys and gears are usually on the end of a shaft. A shaft is a very strong piece of metal or steel um, that can turn. On the end, it will probably have a gear or pulley or maybe even a sprocket um, but that shaft is used to transfer the power laterally in a system. If this is too technical for you, I apologize. This lesson was highly requested though by a lot of engineers, mechanics, farmers and people who like to fix things. So, hopefully, um you realize a lot of this vocabulary is very common but the way I describe it might be a little too technical. So, I'll try my best to keep things clear and simple. Sometimes, you will have a pin in the end of a bolt or in the end of a shaft. This I think is called a split pin. It might be called a cotter pin. Don't quote me on that but often when I fix my lawnmower, I have to take a pin out in order to remove certain parts in order to be able to fix it. Generally, in English, any small piece of metal that goes through a hole like that, we would call a pin and you can also use it as a verb. Sometimes, you need to pin things together. We talked about this in the lesson about things inside of other things. A bearing is something that we use so things turn smoothly. If you were to put a shaft through another piece of metal without a bearing, there would be a lot of friction and it would generate heat. But when you put a bearing in, it spins freely. Every tire on your car has a bearing at the center. On your bicycle, at the center of each wheel, there is a bearing. This is what allows those things to turn freely. And just a general description, anytime we connect one part to another part with something like this, we call it a rod. A rod generally doesn't turn. It's usually used to just connect one piece to another piece. So, if you have um these are called tie rods. They connect one piece of your front end of a car to the other end. So, any kind of um straight piece of metal that connects two things, we would call a rod. And then, the general term for anything else would just be a bar. So, this piece of equipment has a long bar along the back. Um if you were to look in the back of my S my van, there is a bar that goes across. So, this is probably just a general term that we often use to describe anything long that's between two other things. Arm. So, anytime there is parts that kind of do the same thing that a human arm does, we call it an arm. My microphone is on an arm. Um this microphone is on an arm. We don't call the part that bends an elbow or a wrist when we talk about this. We would simply just say I have an arm to hold my microphone. This arm is connected to a mic stand. So, the part that goes this way is a stand but this part here, this part right here, I would call an arm. And then, of course, some basic things. Anytime you uh, need to have electricity in a piece of equipment or a vehicle, you would use wires. Wires generally have copper on the inside. We sometimes even call it copper wire. That's the metal that it's made out of. Um but if you um want your signal lights to work or your turning signals to work on a vehicle, there has to be a wire that goes to that light. And we would call this a harness. When you have a whole bunch of wires together and there is a connector on the end of some of them, we would call this here a harness. In a vehicle, there are so many wires. They sometimes come to the same place. When a whole bunch of wires come to the same place like this, we call it a harness or a wiring harness. This might be one of the uh lessons or this might be one of the vocab words that's a little more technical. And then connector. 
Anytime you have a spot where you can connect or disconnect wires, we call it a connector. In Canada, if you hook a trailer up to a vehicle, there's usually a connector like this on the back. This is one of the styles and you can use that to connect the electricity from the van or the car to the trailer. So, sometimes at the end of wires, you will have a connector. And then, of course, there's cable. Now, we sometimes call this a cable. Sometimes a cable has electricity going through it. So, cable and wire are sometimes used interchangeably in English. Like, there's a lot of cables in my van. There's a lot of wires in my van. But we also use cable um to talk about this type of thing. A cable is kind of like a metal rope or a metal string. Cables are almost always made out of metal or steel. They're very, very strong and if you look, there's probably cables in a vehicle somewhere that connect things together so that they move at the same time. And then a strap. If you have a pickup truck or if you have a trailer and you put something in it, you use a strap to secure it so it doesn't fly out or blow away or if you go over a bump, you don't want it to go um to fly out of the back. That's how we describe it in English. I shouldn't tell this story. My sister would be very angry but once my sister bought a really nice outdoor chair and she put it in the back of her pickup truck and she didn't have a strap. She didn't have any straps. So, she couldn't secure it and when she was driving home, it flew out into the ditch and it broke. It's a very sad day for her. I won't tell you which sister it was. Uh this is a common thing that is used in a lot of places and we call it a zip tie or a cable tie. When you put the one end into the other, it goes zzz, like it zips and then as you pull it, it gets tighter. Um and then you can't undo it. You have to cut it to undo it. So, often when there are a lot of uh wires in a vehicle or in a piece of equipment, there will be a zip tie holding those things together. Anything that shoots water, mostly water, it can shoot other things as well, would be called a nozzle. We have on our farm in order uh to deal with bugs sometimes we have a sprayer and it has a nozzle at the end. So, instead of the water coming out straight, it spreads it out. When you're driving your when you're <laughs> trying to do windshield wipe, when you're driving your vehicle and your windshield wipers are going, you can spray windshield washer fluid on them because there's two little nozzles. So, when your windshield wipers are going, if it's not raining, you can shoot some windshield washer fluid through the nozzles onto your windshield. Magnets. So, magnets are really cool things. They attract metal and sometimes magnets are used as parts for different things. I have a little door in my van that when I close it, a magnet holds it shut. Um I have a little clip that I can put a camera on and it's magnetic. So, I can stick it onto things that are metal. So, magnets are pretty cool parts. Um if you take apart a speaker, the thing that makes sound, there is a magnet inside of that as well. A shield. So, a shield is any piece usually metal, a part of the car or other equipment that protects something. So, here you have a shield that protects the rest of the car from the heat of the muffler. Sometimes um you might have a shield to protect people so they don't touch things they shouldn't touch. Often when you have two pulleys and a belt, there will be a shield in front of that so that people don't accidentally touch it when it's running. So, a shield is usually metal and it's the part of anything um that's meant to protect you or protect the rest of the machine. So, there's a switch. There's also a toggle switch. 
This could be called a toggle switch too but a switch is anything you use to turn stuff on and off. So, often when I get in my van, I will push a switch so the windshield wipers go. Um there's also on my one tractor a toggle switch that you have to flip in order to start the tractor. A toggle switch can be either on or off and it's kind of it's either in one position or the other. You can toggle it. That's also um an English verb. And then of course, button. A button is simply something you push. Um the other day, my van was in the garage and they gave me a loaner vehicle. They gave me a car to drive to they gave me a car uh that I could use while my van was being fixed and it didn't have you didn't have to turn the key. You just pushed a button and the car started. It's really cool. I know most modern cars do that but that was pretty fun for me. <laughs> um and then normally in a car, I would call this in Canada, we would call this the ignition or the ignition switch. The spot where you put your key and turn, we call that the ignition. When you're trying to start a vehicle, you could say, turn the ignition, see if it will start. So, the ignition switch goes from off to on and then you can go one more and that starts the vehicle and it goes back to on. But we would simply call this, I would simply call this the ignition. And then this caused some controversy last time I talked about it. I call this a lever. Some people call this a lever. Uh I'm gonna keep calling it a lever. Um it's anything where it's it's like a rod that comes up with a handle and it allows you to um change a setting, okay? So, on my tractors in particular, there are a lot of levers and those levers do different things. If you want to call it a lever, you can but I'm gonna keep calling it a lever. So, real quick and then I will uh do a few more questions. Here we go. This is a bolt. This is a nut. This is a wing nut. This is a washer. So, back to the beginning. A bolt has an end that you can put a wrench on. A wrench is a tool that you use to tighten a bolt. And the other end is threaded. That's the end where you can put a nut on, okay? So, if we look here, this is a bolt. This is the nut that goes on the end. This is a wing nut. You can tighten a wing nut by hand but a normal nut, you need a wrench to tighten it, okay? So, a wing nut is just easier to do. Sometimes when a wing nut is really tight, you do have to use pliers to undo it but a wing nut, you can usually do by hand and a washer is used uh with a bolt and a nut just to hold things better or to add space or to make it stronger and then sometimes we use a lock washer. A lock washer will actually stop the bolt from coming loose. It actually acts as a little spring to um hold the bolt and nut together better. Um I'm not gonna explain all the details but when you put a lock washer on with a bolt and nut, it creates outward tension which holds everything in place. So, again, this is a nut. It's on the threaded end of the bolt, okay? So, this bolt is threaded. That's all of the grooves at the far end. The nut goes on to the threaded end. If you want, you can use a wing nut and you might need a washer or a lock washer. And then just to repeat something I've taught a couple times before, this is a screw. A screw is different than a bolt because a screw doesn't have a nut on the end. So, you can turn a screw. You can screw the screw into a piece of wood or into a piece of metal um but yeah, that's a screw slightly different than a bolt but kind of the same idea used to hold two things together. So, when you have electricity, you have to protect things from getting overloaded. The way we do that is by using something called a fuse or a breaker. So, what this does is if I'm not gonna go into too many details but it protects things from being overloaded. 
So, this top fuse has actually blown. You can see that there's a little bit of dark inside because the tiny wire in the fuse burnt because the system was overloaded. This is what a car fuse looks like in Canada in North America. Sometimes on a car, your headlights don't work or your signal lights don't work and you need to check the fuse box to see if one, you see the little fuses in there? If one of these fuses has blown. Okay, so once again, when a fuse is overloaded, the fuse will blow and you would need to check your fuse box. We also use these in our houses. Uh in our houses, we used to have fuses in Canada 30 or 40 years ago but now we have what are called breakers. It does the same job as a fuse but you can reset it instead of replacing it which is quite handy. So, a little more technical. The rotor is the part of a brake that the the shiny silver part. The caliper is the thing that grabs the rotor and the brake pads are inside the caliper because you don't want the caliper to wear out. So, when you go get your brakes fixed, sometimes you need new rotors. It's rare but sometimes the mechanic will say, your rotors are warped or your rotors are getting thin. On some vehicles, you might also call this a disc. The caliper, when you press the brake pedal inside this red part, it grabs the wheel. You know how the brakes work on a bicycle? They work pretty much the same way on a car if you have disc brakes. It grabs the rotor and it slows the car down and then here, the brake pads will slowly wear out. They're designed to wear out. So, if you take care of your car, occasionally you'll have to replace brake pads. Every once in a while, if you wait too long, you might have to replace rotors and calipers too. Never fun. It's not expensive to replace brake pads. It's quite expensive to replace those. This is just a knob. Knob is anything that you turn. Um I put this on here because the seat on my tractor has a knob and if I turn the knob, the seat goes up. If I turn the knob the other way, the seat goes down. Universal joint. So, now I'm getting super technical but a universal joint, this is for all the engineers and farmers and mechanics out there. Uh a universal joint is a special joint that allows two shafts to connect at an angle and that angle can change and it won't wreck anything. It won't break anything. So, a universal joint, it's kind of like doing this with your hands and now you can turn but you can also go in every direction. It's kind of universal. So, if you don't think you have one, you do on your vehicle somewhere. A drive shaft is the shaft that takes power from the front of a vehicle to the back. If you have a rear wheel drive car, if you look underneath, there will be a drive shaft. It will bring power from the transmission and engine from the front to the back of your vehicle. If you have a front wheel drive car, you probably have a little drive shaft going to each front tire but uh, that is a drive shaft. Anytime we join two tires together with a shaft or rod, you could use either word here. We call it an axle. So, you have axles on vehicles. Um It's probably more common to have an axle on a trailer or a truck. Um not to get into too many details but most vehicles have four wheel independent suspension. A long time ago, I think the wheels on each side were connected together with an axle but that's a little more rare now. Pretty common though on a trailer, I think. And then this is the hub. The hub is the spot where you put the tire on the vehicle. So, when you put a tire on a vehicle, you put it on the hub and then you tighten up the nuts. This is a rim. So, the rim is the part of the tire that doesn't have rubber. This is the tire. Although, we do use tire to talk about the whole part. The rim and the rubber, we call that a tire sometimes but technically, this is the tire. And then, this is a hubcap. Uh I just lost another hubcap from my red van. I lost a hubcap a few weeks ago and replaced it. 
and now I notice that the front hubcap is gone. It fell off and it went somewhere. The hubcap is the last thing you put on and it just makes the um the wheels on the vehicle look much nicer. Anytime you have a door, it will most likely have some kind of hinge. So, on your vehicle, there is a hinge that allows the door to open. The part where the door is connected to the vehicle is a hinge. So, that is um just a really cool thing that allows one part to move while the other part doesn't. So, almost every door in the world has a hinge of some kind where the door is connected to the wall or the vehicle or whatever else it is on. So, this is a battery terminal. By the way, the gold part here is the connector but where the orange arrow is pointing is called the terminal. We sometimes call it a battery post as well but mostly we call it a terminal. There's a positive terminal and a negative terminal. This I believe is the positive terminal because it has the red wire going to it. Um but yes, if you look at a battery, any kind of battery, even a small battery, it will have terminals or ends and uh one will be positive. But in a in a car, we generally call it a battery terminal or the battery post. Sometimes you don't want stuff to get into a machine so there is a screen in front. Screens are usually made out of metal but they can be made out of other things. You can see that this person was working somewhere where they didn't want grass to enter the machine. They didn't want grass to enter the tractor. So, there is a screen at the front. This is different than oop, this is different than what happened there? Oh, yeah. I gotta do this. This is different than a filter. There. I'm back on track now. There were so many vocab words. I had to have two different slideshows. So, anyways, a filter is usually made out of fiber or something a little more a little smaller and it's used to keep things clean as well. You can filter the air. You also can filter oil to keep it clean but this is just a screen made of metal. It's usually on the outside. On the inside, you might have a filter to keep the air clean or to keep the oil clean. This is a spark plug. When electricity goes in one end, a spark comes out the other end. This is what allows your engine to run. If your spark plugs are working properly, your car will start and it will drive. It's the thing that ignites the gas and air mixture. So, spark plugs are very important to have a good working vehicle. Uh suspension is what we use to refer to everything that holds a tire on a vehicle. There are different parts though. There are springs and shock absorbers in your suspension but this is a good word to know because if you do get a vehicle fixed, the mechanic might say, oh, you need to replace a shock absorber. Your back suspension isn't working properly. So, again, suspension is everything that holds the tire on. The shock absorber, the spring, um, all of those parts are called the suspension. It's what makes the car smooth when you drive and it's because there are springs and shock absorbers. It's a little different on each vehicle but uh that is what allows your car to be enjoyable to ride in. Uh 